In this video, I'm going to be talking more in depth about the projection map template. Um, so I'm starting here in the template chooser, um, and here's the projection map. It's sort of the second template that you get um, in the template chooser because it is one of our most frequently used templates. Um, so I'm going to be talking more in depth about what you can sort of do with the, um, with the projection map and explaining some of the features of the projection map. Um, but before I even get into that, I just wanted to start here in the template chooser so that you can sort of see what your options are before you even get into the template. So um, as with any Flourish template, um, we have these starting points for the projection map. And when it comes to projection map, the starting points are sort of different maps of different places in the world. Um, so our, we have some Argentinian maps, Brazil, Europe, um, quite a few UK-based maps. Um, a bunch of US maps, a London map, a world map. Um, and if the map that you want to make is um, sort of is one of these, then you're sort of set to go um, uh, right away. You can just click on it and get going. Um, but if it's not, especially for sort of non UK or US or more local news organizations, you might be making um, more sort of local maps of a single city um, that's not London. <laughs> Um, you're going to need to use this blank um, starting point. So this is sort of a blank projection map that you have to upload your own geometry into. Um, and I'm going to show you both um, sort of how to do how to do both things. Um, so I'm going to use one of these starting points to sort of show you how the projection map works. And then I'm going to also show you how to upload um, your own data and talk about the requirements for that. So Imagine I wanted to come here and I actually wanted to make a, a map of something um, of the that shows the boroughs in London. Um, so I'd click on this and I'd get to something that looks like this. Um, this is a map of London's boroughs. Um, and the way the projection map works is that it has two different layers. So if we look over here on the settings panel, if I um, do that. Uh, so we have a points layer, um, which I'll enable, um, and we have a regions layer. So you can upload both sort of point level data um, to the projection map, and you can upload um, sort of region or geometric data to the projection map. Um, when you upload, when you use a starting point, there's already going to be both geometry, so the geometry in this case of London um, and its boroughs in there. Um, there's also always going to be some sort of points data. In this case, it's kind of almost dummy data of like the center point in each borough. But for example, on our U.S. states maps, it's always like major U.S. cities. Um, and I'm going to hop over the data sheet to sort of show you how this works. So for the regions, um, there's always going to be this geometry column. And this is where the actual sort of coordinates um, and shapes for these regions that are being drawn are contained. So if you use a starting point that's been pre-made by us, you never really want to touch this, um, this column. Um, you're just going to be sort of working with this stuff. Um, but beyond the geometry, um, just so I can show you, so if I get rid of this setting, um, you can see the geometry goes away over here on the right. Um, so it needs that geometry, those polygons or multi-polygons to be able to draw the map. Um, and then after that, we have like normal things that you would expect um, for column settings. So we have a name. In this case, it's the borough name. And then we have this value um, setting is what the, um, what the map, the, the sort of geometric regions part of the map is being colored by. So in this case, it's being colored by um, this C column, which is the percentage of pupils in that borough um, who, so sort of like school age kids in that borough who um, do not have English as their first language, um, highest here in Tower Hamlets, which is interesting. Um, and uh, this sort of value here can be either a, a continuous sort of, um, number column or it can also be a categorical column um, so this for example d column would be a categorical um, value because we have inner outer london um, um, so whether or not the borough is inner outer, outer london so if i go to the regions layer um, you'll notice here that the color type is continuous and sequential um, we have a bunch of different sort of coloring options 
Um, if I wanted to change this, I could change it to bind, and there's a couple of different options for the bind um, color type, color palette type. There's also this diverging um, option, so if you had sort of negative and positive um, values, you can do that. Um, but I wanted to show this to you because to change um, the value to a categorical value, um, to color by a categorical uh, value, sometimes the thing that people miss is that you actually have to change both the value here um, in the data sheet. So if I change this from C to D, but you also have to change this color type to categorical. Otherwise, um, the template doesn't really know what to do with the, uh, the categorical data that it's reading from, from the data sheet. Um, so that's something to definitely be aware of. Um, we get a lot of a lot of sort of help me emails from people who um, are doing everything right, but they're not actually changing the color uh, palette. And then in this case, you get this color picker where you can sort of um, choose choose a color palette like you would with any sort of like normal flourish chart. Um, and there's a bunch of other options for this regions layer. So um, there's sort of pop up options. Um, you can add shadows and stuff like that if you want. Um, yeah, and if you want to add metadata. We can always add that with the metadata um, column settings. So now on my hover, I'm getting um, that peoples uh, with non-English first language again. Um, so that's the regions layer. Now I'm gonna move over to the points layer and explain how that works. Um, so the points layer is always going to be, um, it, uh, it needs latitude and longitude. So um, you can see here that we have a latitude and longitude um, uh, columns. And those are um, sort of put into the correct uh, column settings here. I would always tell you to make sure you're getting the right one because uh, we have longitude first and then latitude. Um, so sometimes people do the wrong one and they're like, why are my dots not showing up? Um, and then beyond that, there's a bunch of different options. So there's always this value, uh, which is what the, what the dots are being sized by. Um, and uh, the name column is just sort of, you can get rid of it if you, if you don't need it. Um, it's, just, it's just a name column. Um, we can also change the color of the dots. If you had some sort of other categorical um, option for the dots, uh, you could change it and add the color. I just added the name to show you that they can change. Um, oops. Ooh. Um, and then there's also a metadata option as well. Um, so on the points layer, you can do sort of similar um, similar things you can do in the regions layer. Um, if I had, if let me go back and make this color some sort of category. Um, you're also gonna get this uh, same sort of color palette picker that you would get um, anywhere in Flourish. Um, that's only if you have sort of categorical data for the color. Um, if not, you can do things like change this to some hideous green color, um, make them completely opaque if you want, make them really, really light so you can barely see them. Um, there's all different sort of options to customize um, the map. So you can also do things like add headers, um, rows, um, and everything like that. Uh, you can turn off, turn off the legends. Um, you can not show size legends. There's all, there are all these different options that you would expect in a Flourish template. Um, but so this is, this is sort of a normal, um, a normal, easy to make. You don't have to do very much. You just have to sort of customize your settings and you're kind of ready to go. Um, the more complicated option is this blank one, which I'm going to show you right now. Um, so the first thing to know is that geometry should be uploaded um, to the regions layer here. See how it's completely blank um, as a GeoJSON file. So GeoJSON file, which will either have .geoJSON or .json as the um, file exten uh, extension. Um, and it needs to be an unprojected GeoJSON file. Um, we have a bunch of tips sort of on our blog posts about the projection map for um, making GeoJSON files from things like shapefiles and whatnot, but just so you know, it should be an unprojected GeoJSON file. Um, 
you'll get a bunch of errors and your map kind of won't show up if it's not a project uh, if it's not a geojson file and if it's not an unprojected geojson file so in this case i have a sort of good clean unprojected geojson file um, and i'm going to upload it and do overwrite current sheet um, and there we go so this is um, a map of chicago sort of neighborhoods and you'll see a lot of familiar things so the first column is um, it's pulling out this multi-polygon um, and it, that's the geometry column and that's what's actually drawing the map. Then my names are here in the community column and then area is currently this, this C value um, column. And um, it's all the same sort of number so it's kind of drawing the entire map the same color. Um, but there you go. Um, it's kind of as simple as that. Um, Something else that you should know is that unlike in other Flourish uh, sort of templates, this data sheet can merge um, data files. So if I have this, um, and I can actually delete all of those rows. Um, if I had this was my sort of um, geo, what um, Flourish read the GeoJSON as, but I wanted to add other sort of um, other data so that I can sort of color this as a choropleth, um, Flourish can actually match um, can actually match sort of rows together, which is really cool. So I'm going to show you how that works. So after you upload your geometry, the next thing you want to do is click this import your data again. Um, and this may feel a bit weird the first time you do it, but I promise you it will, it will work. Um, and then I have another CSV here on my computer that has the same community names um, with a bunch of other sort of data about those neighborhoods. So I'm going to click this, and this is the most important part. Instead of overwrite current sheet, I want to click merge with current sheet. Um, and then I'm going to choose the um, community, the sort of names that should um, that should match each other. So these are both community area names. Um, and these are just the first couple, so it doesn't have to be in the same order. This is just giving you a bit of a preview of what the, what the names are. Um, it, if it's not in the same order, it's totally fine. It should still be able to match them and merge the um, sort of data sheets together. So I'm going to click Merge. And it's telling me this is great. It's telling me that, that 77 rows were imported. Um, that's perfect because it's not telling me that any were not matched. If there are some rows that don't have a match in the other sheet, um, it will tell you here um, that it threw them away. Um, but it didn't throw any away because they matched perfectly, so that's great. Um, and now you can look in here and instead of empty uh, columns, I have all of this other information about each of these neighborhoods, which are things that I could sort of add to my map. So instead of this sort of area, um, well, it's going to complain if I do that, but instead of this sort of area column, which I don't need, it's kind of useless, um, I'm going to get rid of it. And now I'm going to um, instead color this by this D column, Households Below the Poverty Line, and you can see over here how this switched. Um, so now I'm coloring that by the percentage of households that are below the poverty line. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Um, you can also, it's definitely worth pointing out that you can also do multiple sort of different values here. So if I wanted to um, show a bunch of different things on one map, say I wanted to show households below the, po below the poverty line and also the unemployment rate, I can add that to the um, value and now I have this drop down menu where I can click between uh, the two values which is pretty cool so instead of having to sort of make a story to put all these together you can just do it all on the same map um, that's pretty awesome um, and the last thing I want to show you was just uh, importing CSV data again um, of point data so I have another um, CSV here um, then I'm going to upload to the points sheet, and it has a bunch of different latitude and longitude for um, for um, sort of homicides, I believe, in, in Chicago um, in 2017. Um, so let's see. You can see here that this isn't drawing. I'm not exactly sure what's, what's going on. Oh, so this is perfect. Um, so you don't see any points here because... In my data sheet, I have latitude then longitude, but here in Flourish, the default is to have the longitude before the latitude. So all I have to do is switch these and my points should start to show up. 
one, two, one, two, die, two, die, two. Um, value. my points what's going on oh here we go <laughs> sorry um <laughs> so i didn't really have anything to 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 um i didn't have anything to size the dots by so um it wasn't liking what i was giving it but here you can see now all these dots, which are all of the different homicides um, that that took place in Chicago over the course of a year, um, and I can color them by you know location, type of location, um, or whatnot. Um, so I think this might be the longest video in the entire series, but I think it's really important to do um, a video which which showed you both the using a pre-made starting point and um, uploading your own data because um, there are a, quite a few different places where you can sort of um, trip up and I wanted to kind of point them out and make sure that you kind of have an idea of where they are so you don't make make them or stumble over them. Um, we have a really great blog post about um, the projection map which actually includes another video about the projection map. Um, which I definitely recommend um, watching if you're interested in making um, projection maps of your own. And I hope this helped.